Hi everyone and welcome to the first content of module 3. So today we're going to talk more about functions, some really cool stuff with functions actually. You're going to really enjoy this one. It's very useful and just kind of interesting. So if you haven't enrolled, please subscribe and let's get into it. So we're going to look at some function which we're going to build up and change and change in a lot of different ways multiple times. But for now, it's going to be a function that just takes one parameter x and what it's going to do is print x is plus the string of x because x is going to be a number so we're going to convert that to a string and so if we do f of 5 then we see that x is 5 okay and i'm just writing it like this so we can the point is to, to play around with the parameters slash arguments and so my function is just going to be doing something simple like saying what they are all right so f of 5 this is nothing new we can add parameters. Not sure if we've even made a function with multiple parameters, but you can. We can do f of x, y. And what we'll do is copy paste this and then say print that y is the string of y. And let's try to call f of 5. That doesn't work because f is missing one required positional argument y. So 5 went into the slot of x. So x is 5, but it never even got called because we didn't have a value for y. So what we can do is set, say, y to be anything we want, like 10. So y is now 10, and x is 5, y is 10 is the kind of obvious output there. Now, we can play around with a lot of different things here. We can, for example, set y equal 5 and x equal 10. Now, x is 10 and y is 5. So this is interesting. Because it means we technically, if we know the parameter names, and with some nice code editors, you can see them very easily, um, you never actually have to know the order as to what's going on here. You only have to know the parameter names. And I just said, okay, um, I want y to be 5, and I want x to be 10. As long as you know what these represent, then the order doesn't really matter. You can always do it like this. All right. Now, some of the things we can't do, for example, let's try this. So what do you think this is going to do? Where we call f of 5, and then we set x equal to 10. Well, it doesn't do, it, it's not that smart. And that's because, it's not because it can't be smart. It's because Python doesn't want you to do something that's confusing. It wants it to make sense. So f of 5, what it does is puts the 5 in the x here, and then we try to set x equal to 10, except we got multiple values for argument x because we actually, that is exactly what we did. We set x to be 5, and then we wrote it again and set x to be 10. And it's like, no, I don't know what you're doing. I, I don't really like that. And so we cannot do that. What we can do is just have one of these and set 5 to be x, and then y equal to be 10 like this. And we could set x equal to be 5 and 10 like this, because this is just the same thing as writing 5 here, because that's the first argument, and, or that's the first parameter. And 10, that's going to hit the y. So this is totally fine too. Positional argument follows keyword argument. See, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, because no, actually, you cannot do this because. Again, it is kind of confusing that you're setting stuff equal in the front and then you're doing an order in the back. So that's why I kind of set this up where you might think these things are going to work when actually it's going to be very restrictive on what you are and are not allowed to do. So we're, what it's doing is setting x equal to 5 and then the 10 goes where? Because yes, you might think it goes to the y, but this has no sort of position. It's just setting x to 5. So where does the 10 go? Python doesn't really know. So we're not going to do that. So as we'll see, again, very shortly, you can never put the equal stuff before any of the ordered stuff where we're not specifying the value directly or the, the parameter name directly. So in here, we cannot do this. We would have to do this after. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, what we can do is change what's going on, and I'll just leave this for now as 10 and 5. 
we can change what's going on in here. So we can specify default values. We can set x equal to be, say, 2 by default, except non-default argument follows default argument. So same thing as before, we cannot do any of this sort of syntax unless it is at the end. So what we can do is set y equal to be 2, because this is after the positional non equal stuff, and we call that, then this doesn't change anything because watch what it does do. Now we don't even need to specify y at all, because we set x, okay, you need to supply us x, and you did, you put that in as f of 10, so 10 goes to x, except y equals 2. Okay, if you didn't specify y, then I'll just set it to be 2. But you could do this. You could set y, override it basically, in multiple ways. You could set y, y equal to 5 like this. And since that's the right position in the line, then you can just call it like that. And that's totally fine. Now, just for fun, I'm going to add another parameter just so it's a little bit confusing for, for us to read about. Now, if we set x z to be default 10, and I'm just going to copy and paste this, then print z is z. Okay, so this is totally fine because we have the required stuff at the beginning, and then we set defaults. Notice that if we tried to do something like this, then this is not going to work because we have required. This is not the problem. And then we have this setting this equal to a default, except we have a required after this default thing. And that is not going to work. Okay, so that again, the equal stuff has to be at the end in both sets of syntax. So let's set x and y to be required and z equal to be 10. Well, then f of 10, 5. That's totally fine because the 10 is going to hit the X, the 5 is going to hit the Y, and Z doesn't need to be supplied. Okay, there they are, 10, 5, and 10 again. I guess I should set different values so you can see truly what it's doing, but there you go. And again, we could say, okay, well, maybe I want Z equal to be 5. This is not going to work because we haven't specified what Y is. But we could do it in this order, so there's no reason for, for the order to be specified here because we're just saying, okay, this variable is going to be this, this variable is going to be this. So x is 10, z is going to be 5. We haven't specified y, and so let's set y equal to be something so that, I'll show you, so that it doesn't fail because we haven't specified y. y is equal to the 17. That's totally fine, just like this. Y is equal to 17. This is totally fine because Z is specified. And also F by itself is of course not going to work because we're missing X and Y, except if we did defaults for all of them. Say Y is X is zero, Y is five, and Z is 15 then we don't need to call this with anything because all of the defaults are hit and we can specify to override any which one of these. F of y equals 10, well that overrides the y. And in whatever order, then maybe z is 25, that'll override that one. There you go. Okay, so probably a little bit confusing. Um, I encourage you to just mess around by yourself and figure out what does and does not work. But the idea is that every single parameter that's required, and it's required if it doesn't have a default, then that has to be listed before the other stuff in this syntax, okay? And everything needs to be specified. Everything needs to be hit somewhere. So we need to, everything that's required, you need to specify a value for that thing. And again, just like down here, you cannot set some set some value like this, say y is equal to 25, and then say 5 and 10. This is also not going to work. You always need the equal stuff to be after 
these values without specifying what the parameter is. That is not going to work either. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.